Music. We're all about class when it comes to pens, and we like to let it show. Welcome to Fountain Pen Radio, presented by FBGeeks.com. And now for your Fountain Pen Enthusiast host, here's Eric and Dan. Gentlemen. This is Fountain Pen Geeks Podcast, episode number 26 for Tuesday, May 29th, 2012. We are recording live on Monday, May 28th. For our listeners in the States, happy, happy Memorial Day. Welcome to Fountain Pen Radio. This is Eric. And this is Dan. Dan, how are you today? I'm doing fantastic. How are you? Great. Did you have a nice holiday? Had a great holiday. Had a great weekend. Um, wish I had another day, but you know how it well, goes. You know, the best thing about a three-day weekend is that it's followed by a, th- a four-day week. Yeah, still too long for me. For you, I'm sure. I'm sure you'll (laughs) figure something out. Um, You know, it's just the two of us this week. We gave all our guests the day off since it is a holiday. Whatever shall we talk about? Um, well, you know, the the pool is now open at our apartment. (laughs) Um, I I I fired up the grill last night. Uh, Oh, oh, we probably want to talk about pens. You want to talk about pens? It is called Fountain Pen Radio. Maybe do you have anything you want to say about pens? Um, well. I would recommend that people go to any pen show they can. And uh, the next one coming up is May 31st through June 3rd, and that's the ninth annual Triangle Pen Show in Raleigh, North Carolina. Uh, they're going to have a bunch of stuff going on, an auction, seminars, workshops. Uh, definitely head over to rallypenshow.com and, and check out you know all the details I've there. I've never been there, have you? And no, have no, I haven't. haven't even been to North Carolina. Neither so. have I. North Carolina. Um uh, but we probably know some people who are going. Uh, we probably sure do. That, who, according who, to the that, Andersons, there in their podcast, they're going. Oh yes. So yes. maybe they'll you know uh, tell us all about it in a podcast, and and we can live vicariously through them. I sure hope because so. you know the last, uh, as far as I know, the last pen show they went to, we were there too. So I don't That's know how right. they would have any fun in Raleigh. <laughs> and if you can't make to Raleigh, well, where should you go? Well, definitely the next one you should go to is June 24th, and that's the Midland Pen Show in Litchfield. And you, um, by Litchfield, so you mean the UK, right? <laughs> I, I do. Because I don't know where Litchfield is. We probably have one in the United States. I just don't know where it is. Yeah. But we'll have to try and get in contact with uh, Sarge because I'm sure he's going to be there. Maybe he can give us a little you know, report on how things Maybe went. Maybe he can tell you whether or not he has already sold your pen or it's still waiting for you. Oh, man, yeah. <laughs> Hopefully he sold it, so I don't have to worry about it anymore. Speaking of fountain pens, how many do you have within arm's reach of you right now? Well, I estimated it at around 80. 80? You estimated You mean you 80. didn't count? No, I did not. Well, I counted. How many do you well, have? Well, on that particular day when I answered the, the – we're talking about, of course, uh, last week's or this week's – last week's poll question, which was how many fountain pens do you have right this second within arm's reach? I had 31, so I put – myself into that category this was a very popular poll if you judge popularity by the number of votes it received we're sitting right now at 494 wow far above and beyond anything we've ever seen as far as results before that is crazy uh the number one spot uh, with 21 percent of the votes was people saying they had five to nine fountain pens within arm's reach uh seven people said they have over 200 Within arm's reach. That's impressive. I mean, was that Brian Anderson (laughs) sitting there with all the stock that they have? Right. Well, you know, even if it was, that was only one. So, yeah, that's very impressive. So uh, I would just encourage people, if you'd like to know what everybody said on that one, because it would be very very difficult to read, um, you just go to fountainpengeeks.com, fpgeeks.com, and click on the poll archives link underneath the current poll, and it takes you to... all of our past archives, uh, all of our past polls, and you can see uh, all the results. Um, it's not published yet, but I, I, if you're reading your show outlines, Dan, uh, yes, I uh, am. you can see the next question that I've suggested that you haven't seen yet. If you like it, read it. If you don't, say, we'll work on it. <laughs> Yeah, you're no, it's it's good. You're playing a little bit off this last question. It's how many of your fountain pens could use some sort of repair, service, nib work or tuning? And I think that's a really good question because probably 20 to 30 pens of my 80 could use some sort of service or repair or nib tuning. So Right. And uh well, let me ask you this since we're discussing this question on the air live. I was thinking about doing it as a percentage because you know, I could do uh, one, zero, one, two, three, four, five to nine, like I did with the last one, or we could just make right. a percentage of all your fountain pens, and then 
uh, you could, because some people might say 30 and that would be 100%. We wouldn't know that. I, I, right. I, in my opinion, I'd like to know what percentage of a person's collection could use some work. What do you think? I, I like that idea. Yeah. All right. Let's we'll do, do it, it that as way. a percentage of your entire collection. Sounds good. And uh, I suppose we have some news for the week. It was a good week for fountain pen news. Um, we had quite a few stories from uh, m multiple brands. First up is Stipula uh, releasing the Etruria Tuscany Dreams. Now, this pen represents kind of a, a thanksgiving to all the, the painters, sculptors, architects, and scientists who have made Florence and Tuscany an enchanted place that the whole world all envies. And, and that's Sorry to interrupt that, you, but uh, all of whom would be r turning over in their graves if they just saw the clip they put on this pen. <laughs> Yeah, well, like I'm, I just wanted to note that those are Stipula's words, not oh, mine. Okay. <laughs> um, th this pen is made out of um, precious. There's that word again. Precious black precious ebonite. Precious. Those are Stipula's with crimson words. Crimson stripes. Oh, those okay. are Stipula's words. Okay, they got into the precious market. So, oh, but this is precious ebonite. All right. <laughs> yeah, black ebonite with crimson stripes. This pen will come in three versions: a piston fill fountain pen with a 14k rose gold nib, limited to 351 pieces with a retail price of $750, and I've seen it online for $600 right now. Um, you can pre-order it. And it will come in a cartridge converter fountain pen with a T-Flex titanium nib, which I'm told isn't very flexible. Um, I've never had a stipulate. Have you? No, I haven't. And, and like I said, this is just going off what other people have told me, so take, take it for what you will. Uh, this pin will also be limited to 351 pieces, quite a bit cheaper, retails for 350 street price 280 and then it's also going to be available as a twist ballpoint, but we don't really care about that. So, And these will all be available in late May. So the, the one that's got a street price of 600 is actually a piston filler? It okay. is. Late May. Well, it's late May. They should be here any day. It yeah. is. Yeah, they should be. Uh, what do you think of the picture? Because, of course, that's all we have to go on. Um, Just give me your opinion. I don't think it looks that bad. The only thing that drives me nuts is that clip, and and maybe the cat well, band. It's okay, so I I definitely agree with you there. Um, I would prefer it if the clip was actually just a stopper, instead of a actual clip. You know, like like if it contoured the the cap and was um, very right, close to would, it. Yeah, that's what I think. I think it would look. Well, I don't know how much better it would look, but I think it would improve things. Well, when you do look at it uh, uh, with a closer picture, obviously, than what I'm showing in the video right now, there it is artwork on there. There, there is a they they put right. some th thought into it, but I mean that's like what the world's widest clip. Yeah, it's pretty massive. Yeah, massive. That's a good word. All right, but you know, a, a for effort, but and someone will like it. There is a lot of meaning, you know, in the clip and the cat man. Definitely head over to the website and read the full press release because, I mean, there's a lot of good history in there. And you so. know, Stipula, Stipula has been on my list for quite some time. I just don't have one. Someday. Yeah, the, the Etruria is an excellent pen. I mean, super comfortable. Um, I would love to get one, but man, you just. You never see the secondhand market price come down on them. I mean, they, they hold their price very well, at, at least in my experience. And uh, so, yeah, I've, I've never snagged one yet, but it's definitely on my list. It's on my list, too. I'm not sure what model, but I like that one. Why don't we talk about your video, your your autopsy yeah, video, uh, as I call it? <laughs> it was it was a lot of fun. Um, um, while you're talking, you know, I'm going to play it. But I sped right. it up so, you know, we wouldn't spend eight minutes here. You just keep talking. It was the, a lot of fun. Go on. Cool no. thing, the cool thing about Twisby is that everybody knows is that you know they are so user serviceable. I mean, you can take apart everything, and that's what I did. Um, I started with the cap. Um, you could completely disassemble everything except for pretty much removing the cap band. Um, the the section, the the nib pulls out. You can get to the feed. Uh, you can unscrew the vac filling unit. You can get to all the seals. The, the seals easily pull off. Um, the only problem here, you know, is if you ever need to replace them, these aren't common seals that you could just go buy anywhere. I mean, I'm almost certain you would have to contact Twisby for these. But, um, you know, modern materials, I wouldn't expect you to have to replace it anytime soon. And then, you know, the, the filling knob comes off fairly easily if you have a proper tool. And um, I even put it all back together. And it, I mean, went back together as simple as could be. It was really, really good work on Twisby's part. Well, you made it look simple. 
You made it look very simple. But now tell me about this tool, the, the, the turning knob. You had to make a special tool to get that off. Right, because there's a, a nut down inside the cap. And to get to it, you need to start with something flat like a screwdriver and then cut a notch into it that will fit around the rod. And so once you have that done, you need to add a slight bend to the screwdriver so it can reach down inside the cap in the slot of the nut and, and you can unscrew right, it. So you basically took a flat head screwdriver, cut it down the center, making it into a shrimp fork, and then you, you <laughs> bent those tines uh, to uh, 90 degrees? Uh, not quite. Degrees? I would say... No, I would say probably only 45, 45 degrees so that they would reach down around good. on either side of the rod itself. Right. And like Brian Anderson asked in the chat, yes, it's, it's pretty much exactly the same, the same as the Schaefer vac filler tool. Um, it uses a similar design to keep the filler knob on the end. Now, can you think of any reason why that filler knob on the vac 700 would have to come off? No. no nothing in there I mean, for serve, unless it breaks and you want to replace it, of course. It. Right, like I, I suppose if the O-rings inside the the plastic molded uh, unit that screws into the barrel, like if the small O-rings inside there somehow went bad and you wanted to pull the whole rod out to replace those, then you would need to remove that filling cap. But I really don't think that's going to be a problem anytime soon. I mean, well, I would, I would expect those O-rings to last 10 or 15 years easy. Well, uh, good. But thank you for making that video because you made it look so easy. <laughs> well, you're welcome. It was a lot of fun, and I, I thought a lot of people would be interested. And I guess in thanks it, so. to Twisby for designing it to be so easily disassembled, and, and including the tools to do it. I mean, they give you the wrench to pull the back filler out. Right, now so. they have to give you a shrimp fork. Uh, I'll write <laughs> <Yeah>. to Philip. <laughs> All right. Where are we going now? Another demonstrator. Um. Yes. This is. Um. Where the are Delta we Dolce the, Vita. The, the new Delta. Um, this thing. Oh, my gosh. I like that, huh? I fell in love with the, <laughs> yeah, the first time I saw a picture of this thing, the Dolce Vita Gray Shadow Demonstrator Limited Edition. And this is definitely a limited edition. Only 48 pins worldwide. Um, this pin is built in the same shape and size as the classic Dolce Vita piston. It features a number eight oversized solid 14 karat gold nib. Uh, it's painted with ruthenium to give it that black, you know, dark look to it. Um, it also has a special oversized feed to go with that nib. And it also uses their uh, Delta's ratcheting piston system. And all the trim is sterling silver. Um, and so, so one thing I just want to point out about that nib, that number eight oversized nib is the same nib they use in the Dolce Vita oversized pen. But the piston pen is actually a size smaller. So the impact... I think it has a much greater impact on the overall look of the pen with that number eight nib in it. What do you think, Eric? Well, what's the size of this pen? Is it the the, the same size as our it's, it's as the, our piston Dolce Vitas, but it has the, a yes. larger nib? Well, I, I've always right. thought that, that you know a larger nib is better. So as long as it fits inside the cap, and apparently it does, then yes, with that with that uh, much larger nib, I'm sure it's impressive. Are there any left? I, I bet yeah. they are. Um, the MSRP on these is ten ninety five. Um, that's not ten dollars ninety five. That's that's a thousand ninety five dollars. I don't know what Bryant at Pen Time is actually selling these for. Probably seven eight hundred ish. I'm guessing. You mean you haven't but, ordered uh, one yet? No, wow. no, no way. I mean that's too much even for me. But uh, and th this pen is available in a fine medium or a stub nib, and it's an extra thirty bucks for that stub. And go for it because you want a stub on this. Trust, trust Oh, absolutely. Me. I mean, if I was going <laughs> to buy it, I would get the stuff. I mean, well, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Are we back to Stipula again? Did they make it in there twice? We, are they sending we are. us checks? They giving us stuff left and right. Uh, this one, this time, they're adding a few new models to the Model T family, and they're coming out with the Model T Ambrosia in warm, semi-transparent celluloid. And this fountain pen will be limited to 193 pieces. They're also coming out with the Model T Sahara, which would be the bottom pen in the picture there. And this is supposed to capture the color of the desert. This will be limited to 351 pens. And then there's also going to be a clear demonstrator called the Model T Nuda. And it's made out of resin. And 
as the same with the other one, it'll be limited to 351 pieces. Uh, these pins are supposed to arrive in late May, which they should be coming out about now. And let's see, I think sh retail on these is going to be about 280 and street price is about 224 So not bad. Does that include the, uh, the demonstrator? I believe so. Well, there's one that we can consider, huh? As, yeah, I, it's not like bad. This. I mean, they're coming out with a lot of new stuff. Which which one of these is your favorite? You know, hmm, that's a good question because that Sahara really kind of looks nice. Yeah, it looks really cool. I'm I'm kind of favoring the what is that? The Ambrosia. Well, it's, you get an Ambrosia, and I'll like, get a Sahara, and we can switch once in a while. <laughs> Just as simple just as, as, as that. Simple huh? as that. Nice pens, nice pens. But their uh, uh, filling system is. Um, cartridge, cartridge converter, converter, I believe. Okay, so it's either what we buy two of these or one of those Dolce Vita demonstrators. I would go with the Dolce Vita will, demonstrator. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, uh, what, no contest there. What do you hear from Levenger? Well, they are celebrating their silver anniversary, and they're doing that with a brand new uh, True Rider. Now, this one is crafted out of solid brass. It has a, a gunmetal finished with a uh, like an etched, undulating pattern is, is how they describe it. Yes, when it. I read that, I, I, I wanted to look up undulating, but I didn't. So I'm not sure how a pattern can be undulating. But if you're looking at the picture right now or go to our website and look at the pictures, that is apparently undulating. I guess so. <laughs> um, either way, I think it looks pretty darn good. Uh, as with most true writers, this will have a stainless steel nib available in fine, medium, and broad. Uh, it'll come with a cartridge and a converter. And the nice thing about this pin is it'll hold a spare cartridge inside the barrel wow. when you already have one plugged in. Um, some pins, even this size, only hold one cartridge, and it's you know kind of a pain when you run out of that cartridge somewhere. But it has a converter, so go, it does. Go with yeah, the converter. If, yeah, I would definitely. And you know, not a bad price. Ninety nine bucks price. available right uh, now. Uh, the pictures make it nice looking. Uh, you've had good luck with uh, Levenger pens, haven't you? I have, but I've never owned a True Rider. I, I, I hear great things about them. People rave about them online, but uh, I've never had much experience well, with I've them. I've ordered exactly one True Rider in my life from Levenger, and I sent it back. I sent oh, it you back did? because it was just the size of a paperweight. It was so light, I couldn't believe it. But I think, uh -uh. I think that someone in the comments here on this pen has mentioned that it's... Somewhere on this article I read, it's going to be a heavier type. It's brass, and it's... So it's got to be heavier. Right. So this will probably feel, well, heavier. It probably is heavier than the ones that, one that I sent back. Yeah, it, yeah it's going to be a, a heavy pen, no doubt. I mean, it's, it's five and a half inches long, half inch diameter, and they, they say it weighs 1.07 okay. ounces, you know, which, which to me doesn't really mean anything. To, I mean, I, I would need to compare that to a pen I, I know the weight of. And, you why don't know, you go through some of those awesome it. reviews? <laughs> yeah, I need to do that. I mean, we, we've only got, what, one or two or like 12 yeah, one, up there? One or two dozen, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Twisby's back so, in the news. They are not coming back. They're always, always in the news. news. Let's talk about the bottles uh, first since that's the picture I pulled up. All right. Uh, they're going to an entirely injection molded bottle. Um, I think... Previously, the the main bottle compartment was gonna try was gonna be glass, is what they were shooting for. But it looks like everything's gonna be injection molded, um, you know. And if that brings the price down and, and makes it easier for them to work with, hey, I'm fine that with that. Be my my snide question is: Are they gonna bring the price down to five bucks for this? Um, probably not five bucks, but you know, I'm guessing it's gonna be a lot cheaper than the Diamond Fifty bottle that they released. Um, I, I would expect you know ten fifteen for this. Which, you know, if, if it helps me get a full fill in my VAC 700, you know, cool. But uh, what do you think? You think you'd get one of these for your VAC? I, uh, not for $25. Well, no, but no, no. If it like, came like to 10 15, 15 I would try it just because I want to try the, just to see how cool it is or isn't. Um, you know, I've held off getting the, the current Twisby bottle, even though you have in a video shown us how cool it is. But I just live vicariously through you on that one. <laughs> And then we also got some good updates on the Metal 850. Uh, they showed us what they're going to do with like 
milling the lines in uh, or engraving the lines into the pen. And then they also gave us another update on a polished titanium coating version, which really, really struck me. I mean, this, like, we saw a picture previously, but it was kind of like a, a matte, you know, raw, you know, no finish really to it. But with the gloss on there, wow, that titanium coating just looks smoking good. And I, I hope they go with that. Now, uh, you you posted three pictures uh, along with this article, and I got confused as to what they were. There's one picture that shows basically two pens uh, with caps and clips and all that. One right. of those two is is the one with the titanium coating. The other two pictures. No no, 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 no. Okay. No. Those the 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 picture showing two pens is a black one that's mocked up you know it has all the parts assembled to it and then it also has the like raw silver finish with the engraved lines the machined lines in it okay and then the other two pictures are of pieces and i I are the caps and barrels is that what we're looking at that's what we're assuming and and the other two pictures are of the titanium coated parts and one of them shows it with a glossy finish and the other shows it with a you know a, a matte or um even kind of a rougher finish to it so they're just mocking things up at this point we we don't know which direction they're going or if they're going in all of these directions at once but you have a preference yeah yeah my preference is definitely for the polished titanium coated one. polished titanium coated and is that one of the ones that has these lines Yes, it would be the middle picture in our post. And that is the uh, milled or engraved lines. No, no, no that would be in the left <laughs> picture. There's there's no titanium coating on the oh, okay. milled. Oh, okay. Things. Yeah, see, they've got me rather confused. We should just move on because, you know. <laughs> <laughs> move on to a little bit of art. Let's move on to a little bit of expensive art. How's that sound? Yes, that sounds perfect. Um, Nakaya, it's good to see some news coming from them. Uh, they've been you know, fairly quiet, at least in their announcing of pens in the past. But the past week, they've released um, three pens. The Water Dragon, which is uh, Makai over Ebonite, and it's a $6,000 pen. A pen I'll never be able to afford. Um, if you had six grand, would you get this one? Now, if, if I only had six thousand dollars and I would, I would never have. Yeah, if any if more I money gave you pen. six thousand dollars and I said go buy a pen, um, twenty four hours. No, I don't I'd, know I'd, if I, this. I don't know if this would be the one that I'd buy. No, I wouldn't just buy. Not that this. it isn't beautiful, um, right? In a you know dragon kind of way. It, it's it's very cool. It's like a lot of these pens I think are just you know too much flash for me. This this one des- definitely has a lot going on, but. I, I kind of like it, you know. It's it's it doesn't appear too much. Whereas the the next one, the Fujin and the Raijin, it's a, a wind god and the thunder god. This is just a little bit too much flash for me. I mean, the whole pen is is coated in gold, and then it has you know these the wind god and the thunder god on there. Um, and it's more expensive. I, too, I just you know you, you've got it, gods. It is on this quite pen. a bit more expensive. <laughs> I mean, it's, this one comes in at ten thousand dollars, and you know I just don't think I could rock this now, one. I mean, there's. Now, plus, uh, these gods it. are rather ugly. I mean, the artwork is fine, but the <laughs> gods themselves are yeah, scary. Yeah, they're not attractive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, if, if you're looking for something a little, you know, tame, tamed down a little bit, the fox with the harvest moon might be the pen for you. And I would actually take that six grand, and this would be one of the pens oh, I would you buy. you would buy multiple pens with six grand, not just one. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah, this is a beautiful uh, pen, isn't it? I love it. Uh, it's it's 1600 bucks, and they actually made this as a request from a customer, and, and specifically the request was to get that white belly and, and the tip on the tail, and to use that to, to do that, they used silver powder, and I think it came out excellent. Yes, it's beautiful. Um, I, I contacted Nakaya and asked them if you know these were limited editions or, or how they do these. Basically, these are made on a you know per order basis. You know, they they don't they don't make five or ten of these up in advance and then sell them. I mean, they've obviously made one to take pictures of, and then after that, you know, if you want it, they'll make another one. That's cool. So if you want this pen, you order it from Nakaya, and four months later you get your pen 
But during that t during that's, that time, you know that they're they're working on your pen. It's being made just for you. I, I really find that very attractive. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a, a very cool thing to see. But uh, were you looking for another piece of data, or shall we move on? No, I think we should move on. We've gone to Conway Stewart. Well, they have a Chartwell limited edition that they're releasing, and this is only going to be. Uh, 50 pieces. It's made from solid black resin with an, an engraved... Uh, it's hard to explain this. They're like crossing and interlinking lines that run the length of the barrel section and cap. So it, it gives it a, a cool look, but also a neat texture over the entire pen. The, the cap is engraved with the model name and its individual limited edition number. It features Conway Stewart's uh, washer style clip with silver accents and rhodium plating on the 18 karat solid gold nib um, unfortunately it fills via cartridge converter you know as most other pins do um, but you know one redeeming factor is their nibs are available in eight different options so you get extra fine to extra broad plus italic fine medium and broad you know if, if you need a little bit of extra flair they call it flair. But, uh, plus they're only making 50 Right, fifty well, of these, eight hundred and twenty dollars. That's, yeah. a, that's a, a, a low price for such exclusivity. And you know the, the chart well, it's it's a fairly large pen. So if you like that combined with the black resin, give it you know kind of a lighter weight. You know, I mean, heck of a nice pen. Heck of a nice pen. I think I know someone who should add it to his daily collection, his daily carry pens. Oh, Brian, yes, Mr. Mr. Anderson, Anderson, you're you're up for that. Conway Stewart just wanted to share that he shared with us all of his daily carry pens last week. Did you take a look at those, Mr. Smith? I did, but you know, I don't know if it would fit that well in his collection because he has a lot of vintage stuff. Oh, I know, he'd need a new case for this. He, he uh, would, okay. he would it would be the, the start of his next Well, he case. could move that Twisby into, into the new case and, and put the Conway Stewart alongside of it. He could have a vintage in one hand and modern in the other hand. Because he's got a lot of nice Watermans in there. Is he not giving us a hard time in the chat? Is he not chiming in? Uh, well, there is a little bit of delay, oh, okay. but uh, no, I don't see it. <laughs> yes, Brian, a, a bigger case is needed. Yeah, lots uh, of nice vintage pens there. I, I have my eye on that the 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 number one pen in in there, the Waterman four one four. Oh, yes, I like that one. And he has one with a, a smooth overlay. I thought was interesting. Uh, which one is the smooth overlay? It's it's number four, number four. the the five five oh, two oh, and a oh, half. Yes. The smooth rose gold overlay. I mean, that's a pretty stunning pen. All right. So you know which one you want. I know which one I want. <laughs> Let's go to Raleigh Sounds and good. get that pen. <laughs> <laughs> and then, well, one pen uh, that you might actually be able to pick up in Raleigh is the new Omos three sixty. Is Brian going to be in Raleigh? Um, I don't know about Bryant, but uh, I'm sure, you know, Omos or, or Akinro okay. will be. But uh, this new 360, it, let's see, <laughs> it's it's not a cheap no, pen. Did you see the price pen. on this? <laughs> Should I start with this or save it to the save end? Save it to the end. But is this going to be one All of right. the ones you pick up for that six grand we were talking about? No. Nope. Nope. Okay. No. Nope. don't like it that nope. much. I think it's beautiful. Nope. Go ahead. Tell us all about uh, it. At least they did it right and based it on a vintage 360. I don't know if you've seen the new modern ones, but I think they're just hideous. I, I, I don't like them whatsoever. Uh, this one, you know, the, the shape is much better. It features rose gold plated hardware with an 18 karat nib available in extra fine, fine, medium, and broad widths. It is a piston filler and it's only limited to 60 fountain pens and 12 roller balls. All right, balls. so Conway Stewart I, makes a pen that's limited to 50 and sells it for $850. Omos makes one that's limited to 60 and sells it for... $1,995. Two grand. Absolutely amazing. Yeah. And the price, stunning. <laughs> um, you know, the, the <laughs> thing about it is that the pen is made from titanium, and it has the DLC coating on it, which is a diamond-like carbon coating, which... You know, is is really cool that the technology behind it is is very cool, but it's totally unnecessary for a pen. I mean, di a diamond light coating they use these on uh, the tubes used in forks for motorcycles. So so you'll see these on like MotoGP race bikes. You know, it's very high performance 
high durability, you know, applications that have a lot of wear involved. There's no reason to have this on a fountain. Well, is this perhaps the new Batman pen? Um, or at least Bruce Wayne's pen when, you know, he's at the No, mansion. he wouldn't sport Rose Gold. No, that's the, pro that's the problem I have with this pen. Aside from the price, <laughs> they should have made it, what, titanium? The trim? I I don't know. Their, their high-tech trim, I think, would be a better option. Something that has a silver color to it. Yeah. Would, would have... I mean... I'm I'm personally very glad they didn't because then I might be saving my pennies. But even if I were saving my pennies, how many they're making six? They'll be gone before my pennies would reach that amount. It's a beautiful pen though. I don't happen to like yeah. the rose gold, but there are people who no, will no. who do. So maybe the next maybe they'll make another sixty with a trim that we like. Then we'll be in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm still waiting for that white one to come in at an affordable price. So, well, got to find one of those. Ebay, eBay. Yeah. Let's see. Shall we talk about mail? We've been getting some handwritten Absolutely. mail. I'm sure we have. <laughs> uh, everything that's coming in uh, handwritten mail these days is for our Micarta giveaway, which, which ends shortly. So far, we have uh, 156 entries. On Saturday, we got a letter from uh, Brazil which means that uh, five continents, no, let, me, let me make sure I'm, is that five or six? Six continents? All the continents are represented except Antarctica. So however you count yeah. continents, there's, there's five or six. <laughs> We're going to get email right. on that one, aren't we? <laughs> yes, we are. But uh, yeah, no one has written from Antarctica, unfortunately. Darn. Uh, now there's, Still a little bit of time. If you live close to California uh, and get your letter in the mail tomorrow, it will probably make it here in time uh, before the end of the month. Uh, but our next podcast is when we should pull a winner for that Micarta pen. Absolutely. Yeah, we'll definitely do that. And we got email. Uh, Andrew wrote. And among other things, Andrew said, I fitted my Ahab with a Knox Broad nib, uh, which I ground into a stub. I also had to fit the feed a bit to the nib to maintain capillary flow. Eric, did you have the same issue on your Ahab Knox? I did not. Um, I had to put the nib on there, I think, three times to get it exactly where it should have been, if that's what you meant by, by fitting the nib. Um, but it, it has wonderful flow. It's a nice, wet flow. Um, and, and I don't want to go back to the, to the Noodler's nib. So I had very good luck with it. You haven't done that to yours, have you? Cause... No, I haven't because I like the flex nib in it. Um, I, you know, I've got enough large pins with nails for, for nibs in them. Um, I really don't need another one. This, the, the flex nib in that just, you know, it intrigues me. I, I like it, so uh, I haven't swapped it. Right. I have other things for flex, and I wanted to try swapping a nib. But uh, I, you do have one of those Knox nibs. Now, I do, can, yeah. You, you can got try that me. in your Ahab. It will also fit in your VAC 700. Oh. <laughs> Just in case you want to play someday. S speaking of <clears throat> swapping nibs in a VAC 700. Yes. How um, are you going to work into our next topic? Go ahead. Let me see you do that. <laughs> oh, I wasn't going oh. into our next topic. I was actually, I'm actually, you know, diverting okay, here a little divert. bit. You, you've, you've been it's experimenting a little bit with that, haven't you? Um. Uh, yes, uh, I have swapped out the nib on my VAC 700. Well, sh okay, sh should we talk about this? Are you planning an article about I don't this? I think an article. Uh, I, I think I saw someone in our forum say that they were putting their Pelican nibs uh, on okay. their VAC 700, so I'll probably just uh, take a snapshot and throw this in that, that thread on the forum. I put, <clears throat> I just happen to have, laying in my desk drawer, a Visconti 1.3 millimeter stub spare nib so i threw that i don't know i'll hold it up for anybody who's looking if you i threw that uh, onto the vac 700 uh and it's just a paintbrush and i love it <laughs> <laughs> so you you have a what is that 14k uh this nib is, yeah you're talking about the gold content yeah uh, it's palladium coated 23k Oh, yeah. so I mean, oh, the, the nib is it will cost twice as much as the pen. So this is At this is easily, a two hundred two hundred forty five dollar Vac seven hundred. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> oh, that thing is ridiculous. I, I got to get my hands on that to play with that. Uh, thing. It's, it is a paintbrush. It's unbelievable and, and really, really good flow. The flow keeps wow. up with the paintbrush. <laughs> That's now you crazy. got some new pens this week. Do, I'm sorry. Were you I, about I, to ask me I another had question? One, one question. Do you think if Twisby offered the option for a gold nib, do you think people would jump on that or do you think that would entirely defeat the purpose of what Twisby does? I don't necessarily want a gold nib on, on uh, a Twisby. Um, I, boy, you're putting me on the spot here. Aren't yeah. people balking at the $85 price for the VAC 700 for the most part? Or, or is that just, you know, a vocal minority? I don't know. Um, it's, it's hard to say, but um, there, there are definitely a lot of people shouting about the price. So if you it. put a gold nib on that, we'd be talking of a, at least a $185 VAC 700. Right. But, but, you know, I'm saying an option. I'm not saying if it were an option, that would be switches. cool. I'm yeah. just saying, you know, you, you have the drop down, you pick your color, you pick your nib size, you pick your nib material. Well, uh, uh, yeah, I, I would like to see that as, a, as an option. Was that your question? Hmm. Did I even answer your question? Yeah, 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 yeah. That, that's that's all I was asking. I mean, you know, and simple question. Yeah, yeah. I would like to see that as an option, uh, but they, I think they have to keep steel nibs as an option as well. Oh, definitely. But uh, just wanted to throw it out but there. Speaking see what you of gold about nibs, it. yeah. Did you get some gold nib in the in the mail this week? I did. I got a uh, maybe Todd number six size retractable dip, dip pen, pen from Mr. Manuskin. Mr. Manuskin, who, if you haven't heard the news, after he was our guest last week uh, for the podcast, and once we went off the air, we chatted for a little while more, and he started pulling off things, pulling things out of his drawer that were going to hit his website. <laughs> and you put it in the... I don't know how well you'll be able to see it. <laughs> so you put your um, maybe Todd dip pen in the packaging for a vanishing point, the, the black stuff. I think it looks much better there. <laughs> Anyway, Dan and I wound up each buying a dip pen from Mr. Manuskin after last week's show. Was this your first dip pen, Dan? It yeah. is. What do you think? Have you tried it? No, you put it in a, you put it I, in a frame. <laughs> I haven't tried it. I'm waiting for some special ink oh, to so come in that I want to try it with. special ink. Uh, yeah. Well, let me ask you, uh, where did you get your special ink? I ordered it online. And what did you get? It's it's specific. It's the J or Band Pearlescent ink it's supposed to be real flashy is it specific to nice. dip pens does it have some okay. yes yes you cannot use it in fountain pens all right so you'll get back to me on that but you got so you you held up the stealth v vanishing point uh, packaging with your maybe todd in it i happen to know you, you where you got that you also got a stealth v vanishing point this week i did i got an excellent deal on a, a brand new modern uh, VP Stealth. It came with a bottle of Roshizuku ink, um, $30 value. Picked up the whole package for 100 bucks. Yeah. I mean, the, the pen alone sells for what, 140 or something? Uh, 140. Uh, Juan Carlos uh, in Chicago bought his for, uh, I think it was 125, 126, something there. Uh, so you got a screaming deal on that one. And now that you have one and Juan Carlos has one, guess who else wants one? <laughs> Well, you're going to have to do one just so we can review it. I mean, that's how oh, it goes. Oh, that how that goes? Okay. Well, yeah. I'll put that on my list as soon as I recover from <laughs> yesterday. Speaking of yesterday, yes. we we need to hear your little journey, your 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 trip. What what did you do yesterday? Uh, let's see. I went to Starbucks. Is that what you want to hear? I don't want to hear about, about that. that. No. No. Fast, fast forward, forward, fast forward. Well, I went to Starbucks in Beverly Hills at the Beverly Center. And I met up with uh, somebody who's a fountain pen geek, someone from our forums. Forum uh, username is DET. I don't know if he uses his real name in the forums or not. His name is Daniel. I'm just going to say it because oh. you're also Daniel. So we met at Starbucks at the Beverly Center and we went to the Mont Blanc Boutique. And we took them by storm. And we made quite an impression. And I walked away with Did something. So, so tell us a little bit, before you tell us what you walked away with, how was the experience at the boutique? I mean, what did you guys, when you first walked in, what happened? Uh, everybody said hello. There were uh, four, uh, four employees in there and not a single customer because, of course, it's a holiday weekend. There was, I'll just mention them, Karen, Daniel, another Daniel, uh, 
Yanni and Katie were all working in there, so they all said hello, and if we had any questions we could ask. You have to walk through uh, all the luggage and all the watches to get to where they have the pens, and I had called previously uh, to make sure that they had the pen that I was most likely going to purchase, or at least wanted to see, um, so I told them, uh, I asked for who, who I spoke with over the phone, and she wasn't there, but they all knew I was coming. And so we sat down at the writing desk, their testing station, and Daniel uh, had never been into a Mont Blanc boutique before. So we got uh, the tester set, which I don't uh, know, I think it's like 14 uh, 146s, each of which has a different nib in it. They're all inked. You can play with them all you want. Um, and I was wearing my Fountain Pen Geeks pin, and I was Karen was sitting at the desk with us, and so we started talking about Fountain Pen Geeks, and we started talking about nice. uh, what we do, and and uh, before I know it, she has both of the Alfred Hitchcocks in front of me, the oh. the, the 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 version that comes in a limited edition of three thousand, and one of the version that is limited to eighty copies. I couldn't believe it. First of all, I couldn't believe she had one because... It's a $27,000 pen. I, they, I thought for sure they would all be sold out by now. She says, oh, I have one in the back. And she she goes and gets it and brings it out and puts it in front of me. I'm allowed to touch it and examine it with my loop. And it's it's a good, a very good heft on that pen, which I suppose you would expect if you're going to spend $27,000. So is it uh, is the Hitchcock a 146 or a 149 sized pen? I didn't hold it next to it, but it's got to be a 146 size pen because it, okay, uh, it, I figured it's as not much. As, it didn't strike me as a large pen. It struck me as a heavy pen, and uh, the red one, the the red in it. I don't know how they made that red, but it looks like the pen is covered in blood. It's just amazing, <laughs> a very deep. I took a picture and I tweeted it. Uh, but uh, you know, of course, the picture doesn't doesn't capture the the red that you see in real life. Right. The non the the regular version that's limited to eight, to three thousand, um, it, it which is how much three thousand one hundred and fifty dollars. So it's still Something not like cheap. That, yeah. uh, it's also extremely impressive, and the design they put on that uh, really kind of makes you feel like you could be dizzy so it was for the vertigo uh they did <laughs> right. an excellent excellent job on these pens oh yeah i mean it's i think it's by far my favorite um you know limited version of any pen that they've done i mean I, I, it's absolutely it stunning is. and uh well you'll probably get a chance someday to see the the 3000 version someday we'll go to a mont blanc and they'll have one uh, i don't know about the 80 i i'm really surprised that they still had one uh, but I was very, very happy to see it and to hold it. So how many pens? Because cause like we've uh, been in other Mont Blanc boutiques before, and they have a lot of other things besides pens, you know, and some of them have just a little pen section. How many pens did they have here compared to all their other stuff? Uh, well, you know, pens take up less space than luggage. Uh, so luggage is in the front, and it's kind of in your face. Uh, but it seems to me they have a lot more watches, but that's what you see when you first walk in. Once you get past the watches, it's, they had, I'm sure they had anything you wanted. I mean, I, I wanted to see uh, the Johannes Brahms, they had that. Uh, I wanted to see the, the, the cheaper version of Alfred Hitchcock, they had that, and they surprised me with the expensive okay. version. I wanted to take a look at the Princess Grace, I wanted to see a John Lennon. They had everything I was looking for, and and Everything that I just mentioned was also on display in, in big display cases. Uh, it was It's a beautiful store. It's a beautiful store, and, and they know what they're doing as far as marketing is concerned. And they make, they, oh, they make you feel very much at home. They make you, they, you know, That's it's good. quite an experience. Um, and so what did you walk away well, with? I got a nice bottle of green ink. Oh, green yeah. ink, huh? I wanted the, the British racing green, but, you know, that's just... Not not possible. So that that's all, huh? You just bought a bottle. Well, of I got ink. a bottle of ink to put in the Johannes Brahms. Oh, I guess. Yeah. Oh, I have, very nice. I still sir. have a picture of that from last week. There, I put it up there. Um, <laughs> oh wow! Every bit as beautiful in real life as it is in the photographs that they have provided. Uh, I did ink it up yesterday. I put in uh, Iroshizuku Tsukiyo. Uh, I got the broad nib, and it's just been delighting me ever since. Um, I, I know wow. 
that uh, I'll send it to you in a couple of weeks, Dan, so that you can also experience this. You better not. <laughs> oh, no? If you send it to me, you know, any sooner than like six months, I mean, there's something wrong with you. Oh, don't mean. you think we need an awesome review on this? Well, we do, but oh, you know, so after, after the the, the, the wears off, hundred eighty I mean, days. I got a hundred eighty <laughs> day visa for Herr Brahms. Okay, that sounds good. Uh, yeah, that was my big wow, adventure. That's awesome. And then uh, Daniel and I went out to lunch, and uh, we we both had pen cases, and we just played with pens. Very cool, yeah. man. That sounds awesome. I wish I lived closer so I could have joined you. Yeah, I think it's going to be. Not that I've said this to anybody, but I don't see why it shouldn't become like an every memorial weekend event. Mm. Sounds like a good time. Um, well, now that I is it time to something away? We should have a geek challenge. I've got something to give away. I've got it right here. What we got? I've got. Uh, it's a Lamy. Let me scroll down to the exact text so I know. It's the Lamy Nex fountain pen. N e x x fountain pen. It's. Oh yeah, this is one of yes, their new it's ones, in right? Citron, and it has a fine nib. Um, this was graciously provided to us by Philofax, who is the U.S. distributor of Lamy. Uh, so that's up for grabs today for our Geek Challenge. The Geek Challenge, of course, requires a caller. I've got three questions that are easily answered by any fountain pen geek, and the caller will just have to answer the true or false. The, uh, I'll help. Dan will help. The audience will help. We want everyone to win here, and we can all learn something. So why doesn't somebody, if anybody's listening to the sound of my voice, Call now, 909-647-5056. That's 909-647-5056. Rocky, if you don't get through this time, let me just say happy birthday a few days early. Uh, Rocky's birthday is at the end of the month, the 31st. Oh, happy birthday, Rocky. You know, I'm kind of expecting it to be him since, what, he's called twice already? Yeah. Okay, somebody's calling from Virginia. Let's see who's on the line. Virginia, I'm guessing that's not going to be Rocky. (laughs) That's not gonna be rocky. Let me get speakerphone here, and then we'll say, "Hello, can you hear me?" Yes, yes, I can hear you. Um, who's calling, please, and where are you calling from? I already said Virginia. I guess I took the. You know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, someone else is calling now, so my call waiting is beeping through your phone call. Uh, I didn't hear your name. Yes, this is me, Smallwood. Uh... Lee Smallwood is calling. Lee Smallwood. Wow. Well, Lee, thank you very much for calling. Um, uh, it's an honor to have you here. Uh, it is. We, we see so much of him online. It's, it's, nice, it's to nice to actually him. hear him on the show. I, I'm, I'm, I'm starstruck, but shall we play the game anyway? Sure. <laughs> now, okay, I don't think anybody's going to have to help you with these. Okay. But we'll try it. The, the first one, of course, they're all true or false. Here's the first one. All Lamy writing instruments are made in-house at Lamy World Headquarters just outside Vienna, Austria. Hmm. Lee's having trouble with that one. If you're watching Dan... I think that sounds right. Dan says he thinks that sounds right. Is anybody helping <laughs> in the audience? Lee's going uh, off... We got a not true. We got a oops. Um... um. Vienna, Austria. Yeah, no, hmm. I'm, I'm having a little trouble. Austria is kind of near Germany. But I, I believe they are a German company, so I'm going to go with false. Lee, you are correct. Uh, there if, you go. if they are made just outside Vienna, Austria, you're going to have to define how far just outside, because they're in <laughs> Heidelberg, Germany, which, you know, compared to California, is a lot closer to Vienna, but they're not in Austria. They are in Germany, always have been. So we're one for one. Let's go to number two. <clears throat> True or false, the Lamy 2000, released in 1966, and Lee, you are familiar with this pen, correct? <laughs> I am. The Lamy 2000, released in 1966, was so innovative and modern in design Sorry. that it was twice used as a prop during the 1968 season of Star Trek. That has to be true. Lee is researching Google. I can just say, anybody in the audience have any opinion on this? Uh, We we got a false, a ha. I don't think I've seen a 2000. Okay, if you're a tracker, you know the answer to this. Uh, You said you don't think. 
and you think it's false and it is false yes if i don't believe i saw in any star trek at least the original series anyone ever use a pen other than a stylus on their ipads which you know they weren't ipads at the time but that's what we're using now so that's false yes but you know it was certainly modern enough to have been in a futuristic it's modern to even by today's standards i think in my opinion absolutely Okay, Mr. Smallwood, here's the one for the pen and the win, true or false. U.S. President Abraham Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation with an olive green Lamy Safari. False. Oh. You didn't even have to think about that. <laughs> you could have given the audience a little time. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know what he signed it with, but it certainly wasn't a Lamy Safari. Dan, will you keep the audience company while I say goodbye to Mr. Smallwood? Absolutely. You know, I was surprised uh, about some of the guesses. Brian, I, I like your little comment that that question was so absurd it might be true. I never know what Eric is going to throw in for these trivia questions. I mean, <laughs> that question about the Lamy 2000 being on Star Trek, that was absurd. It's hilarious. It could have been true, though. I don't, you know, it could have been. That I mean, yeah. Been. <laughs> well, thank you, All Lee, right. for calling in. That was great fun. That was. Um, so I'm going to, I'll call him back for an address, and then tomorrow when the mail is open again, I'll get that pen off to him post haste. Uh, but that was a fun game, yes. So we uh, had a, you know, a little review go live this past week. It, it had been a couple of weeks since our last one had gone up. Uh, do we want to talk about it at uh, all? We can mention that we put it live. Uh, we finally completed our awesome review for the Twisby VAC 700. Um, we did. We added something interesting to this review. We've added a little piece of more awesomeness, I think, to our awesome reviews. And you, of course, know what I'm talking about, don't you? Yeah, it's the Twisby, the the review kind of overview video. Right, the video where we just hop on, well, we actually hop onto Skype and talk to each other about the pen. Because we don't talk much about a pen that we're reviewing before the review is finished. Uh, we don't talk about right. it at all, really. Well, unless yeah. we have a really big problem with the pen that, that can't right. be solved without a little communication. But generally speaking, we don't talk about it until we both see each other's opinions in the finished product. And then we talk about it. So this time I figured, well, why don't we just record our conversation about it? So that's what we did. Uh, so I think that's that adds a little something to the awesome review. But this one was really um, media... What do you want to call it? Intensive. I mean, yeah, we had. We've uh, got what th th three videos in there. Um, a bunch of images. I mean, I think it was a, a great I review. Think, uh, I think it is a great review, uh, and I think it's a great pen. Um, it's not my favorite Twisby, uh, but that's not because there's anything wrong with the Vac 700. It's because I like the other two Twisbys more than the Vac 700. But that's just an opinion <laughs> thing. It, it does, has nothing to do right. with the Vac 700's any shortcomings. It's a great pen. What did it get? A, a geek factor of 8.1. It's high up there. Yeah, it's, it's really high up there. It did very well. And your favorite feature, of course, is the filling system. Yeah, yeah by far. I mean, it's so cool. Yeah, I like the pen. I like the pen. But if I had to choose... It would be third in line of the three Twisbees that I own, the 540, the Micarta, and the 700. And you said, I think you said you're just the opposite, right? Yeah, I think the Micarta, you know, just, just barely edges it out um, just because it's such an interesting material. And I don't know, I just really, really, really like the Micarta. But, uh, you know, I mean, I'd have to flip a coin between the two wow. of them. So. But the 540 is definitely a solid third it's, place. But like I said, I think because we, we discussed that actually in the, the video we, we published. We don't have to choose. We can keep them all. <laughs> In fact, That's we can right. buy more if we want to. And I, I also shot a little video. Um, I, I finally learned how to fill the VAC 700 properly and, and get a full fill. Um, I, I showed my technique to do it. But uh, have you done that? Have you filled it full or do you just do one shot and go? Uh, no, I, fill, I filled it full. I filled it full. And uh, even before your video came out, uh, what I did was I stood at the sink and, and did basically what you do. You make the air go up to the top and push on the, the rod to get the air out. You know, I, I just figured that must be what... I didn't even know if other people were doing it. I just thought, well, this is how I'm going to get the thing full. Um, you were much more uh, skillful. I don't know. It looked like you practiced a few <laughs> times and you got the fingers in the right position. And you even say why you put your fingers that way. And I thought, well, that makes a lot of sense. But, you know, uh, yeah, I filled it full and I don't think I'll... Like I said somewhere in the review, I don't think I'll need to ink it again until 2013. Right. Yeah. I mean, after this, I'll, I'll probably just do the, you know, one shot and run because uh, 
I mean, you, you get at least, you know, a milliliter, you know, close to one and a half milliliters of ink on a good, you know, fill just from one shot. With all the pens I have inked, that's going to last me forever. <laughs> exactly. I yeah. mean, jeez. But yeah, great pen. Definitely looking forward to the next one that comes out, which is probably be the I hope mini, so, right? That's the one I'm most looking forward to. So, the 850. You're looking times, more. For, for you're looking more forward to the mini or the 850. Uh probably the 850. Okay. So I'll be the mini and you'll be the 850. Perfect. All right, Perfect. sounds good. Should I tell people how they can contact us? Absolutely. Uh, you can contact us. We're at email podcast at fpgeeks.com. You can call us 415 685 geek, 415 685 4335. We are on Twitter, twitter.com slash fpgeeks. You can find us on Facebook, facebook.com slash fpgeeks. We have a website, fpgeeks.com. We also have a very active and fun forum, fpgeeks.com slash forum. You can write to us, Fountain Pen Geeks, P.O. Box 499, Highland, California 92346. And if your letter gets here before, May 31st, you will be automatically entered into our drawing uh, for the Twisby Micarta. And that's all I've got. Got anything else for us, Dan? Just thanks for watching. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed uh, your Memorial Day for those of us in the States. And until next week, this is Eric. And this is Dan. Good night. You've been listening to Eric and Dan on Fountain Pen Radio, a weekly podcast produced by fpgeeks.com. Thanks for listening, but the fun is far from over as the site is constantly buzzing with new content. So until next week, thanks for coming out. Good night.